Well, hello, hello, y'all. This is Latka. Here today, we're playing Battle Brothers. Battle Brothers is a game about managing a mercenary company, traveling throughout a map, and getting into strategic battles where you control each mercenary and decide what skill they're going to use to attack. It's also a very hard game. I put about 10 hours into this a year and a half ago and it kicked my butt so hard that I put it down. <laughs> but now here we are. We're picking it back up. We're going to give it a go. See if we can't do a long-term campaign or at least two to three shorter ones, depending on how well I hold it together. But yeah, uh, very cool game. I hope to show it off to you. Let's uh, hit that new campaign. Now we're going to do the tutorial just because I haven't played in a year and a half, but there are so many different cool like starting origins, uh, like this one where you're cultists, another one where you're Northern Raiders, the Vikings, uh, you can be gladiators. It's really cool. Just and oath takers like Palans and stuff. So yeah. Really cool. We'll we'll be using the tutorial origin though. So you are second in command in a mercenary company that has been tracking a brigand named Hoggart for some time now. An unexpected turn of events leaves the company in shatters, and you in charge to rebuild it to its former glory. So let's start this. I really like that. I really like the Griffin, but let's check out the other standards and pick a name for that. Crown and Swords, Bloody Sun, some axes, arrows, hey, a headless man in a rain of blood, nice. This one, uh, if I picked the Oath Keepers, I would definitely use this one. Spooky Cultists. Kind of like a weird sword in, I forget what that's called, but it's like some sort of uh, swinging hammer. There's a lot going on in this one, and it's honestly too much. Crying Maiden. Wolf Paw, Arrow, and Spear. Pretty nice looking. This one's pretty good. I might consider the Oath Keeper one for this one as well. Demon with a bunch of dead people. Got it. Raven, always classic. Naked Mermaid. <laughs> a Templar upon a pile of bloody skulls. This one's really pretty, but I don't know what it is. Like some swords here and something. This one's also pretty nice. Ooh, interesting. Dragons. Dancing skeletons. Oh my gosh. I love it. And then we are and like a oh this is one of those ones where it swings open that's cool some sort of snake and wolf eating each other i think maybe viking dragon hey can't go wrong with an impaled demon head some sort of ouroboros thing hog's head that one's pretty cool. Like a skeleton zombie getting swallowed by a monster. A bear. And the griffin. Okay, okay, okay. So, late game crisis, pretty good. We'll just hit random. Permanent destruction, we'll leave that off. Permanent destruction is kind of like uh, cities and towns and castles can be permanently destroyed and is another way to lose your campaign if that happens. Um... I'm going to die way before we hit the late game crisis, but if we do manage to hit it, I don't want towns and cities to burn. So, yeah. Okay, what should our name be? It's a griffin. They fly, right? Eagle head, lion body with wings. Uh, rising... Rage. Rising Rage. Yeah, I like it. 
And like I said, this is a very hard game. Uh, so we're going to play on beginner. And the starting funds is high, but I will. But I will turn on Iron Man. Okay, our mistakes are permanent. And we will not be reloading. So please forgive me for playing on beginner with high starting funds. We'll put on Iron Man to compensate. All right, let us start the game. Ah, uh, yes. The Battle Brothers. Here we go. The last battle. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hoggart the Weasel and his band of raiders. But it was them who found you first. An ambush. Some joke about horses, cut short by an arrow to the throat. Arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream. A great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of the men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A harried glance sees the men charge without you to make a valiant last stand. Met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword and with all the will you can muster, slowly rise again. To the end. Alright. So this is the strategic map. That is the death. <laughs> that is the second death. So we usually start with these three mercenaries. And yeah. So it's like a hex based game where you can move, uh, you have action points. We're going to shoot one of these guys. Uh, this guy right here, we have a 57% chance to hit. And we missed. Perfect. Love to see it, love to see it. We'll move that way. Move him there. And him here, and we'll raise up a uh, spear wall, which will attack anyone who tries to move into melee range. Alrighty. <gasps> Unfortunate that he got that hit off, but it is what it is. We've got a 58% chance to hit with split man, a slow overhead attack performed with full force to split a target in two. So we are going to, we got him right off the bat. Boom, headshot. <laughs> We've still got three movement, so we're going to move forward. We're going to take this shot and we hit. Hey, love to see it. And we're going to charge forward. Unfortunate that he got the first turn there, but is what it is. So he's surrounded now. Uh, so one of the things is it's a realistic game. So like just because I'm shooting a crossbow at the enemy, you'll notice these little red uh, arrows with shields on there. It's because I'm blocking, right? Line of fire blocked. So if I were to shoot, I would have a good chance of hitting my own team. So we're going to move all the way up here. And that was his turn. And then we're going to attack with the spear. And hopefully kill. Perfect. Three rounds. Two kills. So he had a gambeson. A wooden stick. And a wooden flail. We'll take them all. You're alive. You won. 
The adrenaline fades and in its wake you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow shaft. Your chest heaves, pain for breath, everything blurs. The company has been devastated, cut down to but a few men. And that bastard Hoggart did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind. It's Sigvold who sits down beside you, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. Bernhard's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader, but it all, all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Engelbert joins the two of you, still breathing heavily. Then Gunnar. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the man, the men a good bur burial and return to Seftenberg to collect our pay. The weasel's men are slain after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see to that wound before we lose you too. Wouldn't want to leave Engelbert in charge, right? So be it. So this is the overworld map. Uh, you have pause, speed one and speed two. A uh, bunch of options over here, such as looking at the obituary, showing factions and relations, the camp, and so on and so forth. We will be making our way to Seftenberg and unpausing the game. And moving at speed two. <laughs> shingle humps. Love to see it. Love to hear about shingle humps. Alright, then we'll pause it. Well, not pause it, but knock it down to speed one. What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive in Senfentenberg. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The man who hired the company days ago, Wolf the Councilman, no doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunt and wheeze as an elderly man with shaky hands tends your wounds. A pin piece pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Wolf the Councilman sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hoggart. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades in the end. The healer waves around a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire, flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Wolf the Councilman hounds you a goblet of wine. You did well, Sellsword. The brigands have been removed, though it is a shame that Hoggart still lives. We expect to get paid for this. Wolf the Councilman gasps. Well, naturally. Four hundred crowns as agreed upon. He gestures towards a servant who rushes to your side with the pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hoggart once and for all. And I'd pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we say. Sigbird's, Sigbold scoffs and turns to drink more wine. But Gunnar spin, stands to speak. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the rising rage, Sigbold would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets. And Engelbert... Engelbert... By the gods we all know, he'd go chasing the women folk until one stove is rotted head in. We need the rising rage. It's all we have. What say you, Captain? Sigbold burps and raises his cup to you. Engelbert playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard Hoggard or not. It's up to you, Captain. Yes, we have unfinished business with Hoggard. Wolf the Councilman claps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent. My little birds will need some time to find where Hoggart is hiding his is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time at the latest. 
As you leave Wolf the Councilman's house and stand on the outskirts of Sef Seftenburg, Gunnar seeks a word with you. We need more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but bravado won't do shite. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find three good men, buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this Bodunk town's got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could tra travel to Eisenfest in the east. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these country bumpkins, but we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. That's what we shall do. All right. So I know that was a lot of reading. I apologize. Um, quests usually take a little bit of reading, but this one's pretty long because it is the tutorial. But let us start going. So we have the armorer, a marketplace, and a taxidermist. We want to hire some people, though. So we got a few options here. Why are you so expensive? Background Shepherd. So we got Wernhard, who is a farmhand. With food so needed, there's little wonder why farmers are the most common sort of man in the land. Uh, yeah. Ludger, who is a poacher. After a long and hard winter that left him without a stock of food, Ludger set off into the woods in chase of deer. Radolf, who looks like a brawler. With a face contorted to the shape of others' knuckles, it's not hard to realize that Radolf is a career fighter. We might take Radolf. Uh, we might try him out and then take a... Uh, you know what? We're just going to take Radolf. It's a decent background. Beggar. Wigmar is a beggar. After his gambling addiction got the better of him, Wigmar was forced onto the streets, depending on the goodwill of others. Uh, we probably don't want a beggar. Enthralled by sheep herding competition, Gerald, Gerald took to sheep herding as a surprisingly competitive vocation. We, I wouldn't mind another ranged person. Ludger is also ranged, but Gerald the Shepherd is cheaper. So this is the base price to hire them, and then this is the cost per day to keep them around. So you manage money, and you manage uh, food that you use, tools to repair, ammunition, medical supplies. Like, it's a, it's a big simulator, you know? So let's look at our roster. Uh, let's give him the Gambeson. And a wooden stick. Uh. Just looking at everything here. So the wooden stick is a mace, right? Damage of 15 to 25. 40% of damage ignores armor, 50% effective against armor, and a maximum fatigue of minus 6. While the flail is a damage of 10 to 25, so 5 less, it does about uh, the same, it's the same effectiveness against armor, but it's 10% less uh, damage ignores armor, but there's a 10% chance to hit the head, or a plus 10% chance. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. Uh, but we'll give him the stick. We'll give him the stick. This guy shouldn't be running into combat. So we'll keep him in his linen tunic. Uh, yeah. Shepherd, but what is it? Slingstone? Oh, I didn't check the... Uh-oh. Double grip, that's pretty good. Superstitious is not good. Um, it's cursed. This character is highly superstitious and therefore more vulnerable to skills that directly attack his resolve. 
resolve. Uh, minus 10 resolve at morale checks against fear, panic, or mind control effects. That's really bad. So this guy gets 100% damage increased when unarmed. Unfortunately, unarmed is still pretty crappy. So we're going to give him this wooden stick and give him the double grip, which gives him plus 25% damage with the wooden stick. So we need one more person, but we're going to hire from Eisenfeast, Eisenfest. And we will take that traveling, cut across the field here instead of taking the roads. Love it. Real phones. Cool. As Eisenfest's skyline appears on the horizon, Engelbert seeks a word with you. Never been to Eisenhuis Eisenfest before, but I've been around ones that look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods as all these prissy, pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye out for bargains, and don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Sigbold sees fit to add his own opinion of what you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pint. Gods know we earned it. Engelbert shakes his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that even when you're already drunk. I'll keep it in mind. We will finish going to Eisenfest. Alright, so we got a good, decent crowd of people to hire. We have a tavern. Armorer, training hall. Training halls are interesting. As in, uh, they don't give you experience, but they give you boost, uh, bonuses to experience gain, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. So, Weaponsmith, Marketplace, let's hire one more person. Nut the Butcher. Amazing. Uh, Magnus Eagle Eyes, Bernhard, Winrich the Odd. All these people that we cannot afford. <laughs> so, Dietrich Quickmind is a apprentice. Mastery of an art is prestigious, but no one gets there in an instant. Urged by his parents to better his craft, Dietrich looked to start his career as an apprentice. We have Anton. Background is a miner. Mining is tough work, the sort of job men like Anton flock to. Sadly, he proved to be the only survivor of shaft collapse, and there's no way he's digging back in there by himself. Otwin is also a miner, not the butcher, not the butcher, is a sellsword. A decade ago, Nut lost everything in a fire. He's been working as a sellsword ever since. Reinhold, what are you? Caravan Hand. Okay. Orphaned by war and pestilence, Reinhold grew up under the wings of a traveling merchant. Falk is a farmer. Magnus is a retired soldier. Once a footman in the army of a local lord, Magnus... Eagle Eyes battled the ferocious orc hordes, the campaigns eventually forcing him into retirement. Bernhold is the same thing. Winrich the Odd is a squire, okay. Squire to a knight, sure, but Winrich mostly cleaned latrines, fed dogs, and got far too much use out of his shine box. Shepherd, farmer, what is this? Oh, rat catcher. Bow-legged and scrawny, Falk's career of hunting rats has seemingly turned him into one. We might take him. Honestly, he's really cheap. And the uh, net that he comes with, uh, really good weapons. You throw a net and then you like just slaughter the man caught in it. <laughs> uh, Dietrich? Okay, you know what? We're going to hire two. So Dietrich and Fall. And then we're leaving that. We need some sort of armor for them. 
Dietrich an apron. Uh, probably not the best. So what are you? You're strong. That's good. You're brave. Even better. Okay. Dietrich's uh, got some pretty good little perk points here. Unfortunately, you see these little stars? That's when uh, they'll gain the most experience whenever they level up. So unfortunately, he's got range skill, fatigue, and initiative. We would have really loved to see melee skill on this guy and some sort of defense. Because honestly, Dietrich probably not going to last very long despite his good little perk points there. And Falk is bloodthirsty. All kills are fatalities. That's pretty dang good. Throw net and hand-to-hand -hand attack. Yeah. So we're just going to give him the, the little flail there. And let us buy weaponsmith armorer. Oops, not the uh, tavern, but the armorer, please. Mail patch. Um, I don't know if I want to spend this much money on on honestly losers. I will, however, take some bread. And then... Oh, a falcon. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen that before. I ha I've i seen a war dog, but not a falcon. Uh, sackcloth? No. We will take the thick tunic and the padded sure coat. I think that'll be decent. And we'll take the Aikton cap. We'll take two. Okay, so now let's look at our roster and equip these people. Dietrich, you can have the thick tunic. And let's see here. They're both the same. I don't know why I was comparing. Uh, <laughs> we'll give you the padded sure coat. Although, actually, Dietrich. Yeah, actually, we're going to switch those up. I did not, in fact, switch those up. Jeez. Okay, there we go. Give him the hat as well. Engelbert. Gunnar. Sigvold. Okay. Okay. So now we need one more weapon for Dietrich. Spears are good. Uh, they're usually pretty dang accurate. But I wouldn't mind... Knives. Ooh, look at that military cleaver. I would not mind... A mace. Maces are very effective against armor. So I feel as if the bludgeon here is a pretty good buy. We'll sell the sackcloths and the apron. Slap Dietrich with the bludgeon. And we'll move on with our lives. Uh, we'll, we'll spend a night in the tavern. Pay around for the men. There we go. Everyone gets a little bit of morale boost and we'll go back to Seftenberg to complete our quest and then we'll probably call it once we have our big battle with Hoggart I've done a lot of reading and not a lot of gameplay but that'll change that'll change Wolf the councilman is pacing back and forth when you find him the healer who damn near killed you with the fire poke is standing nearby. He's picking chunks of dried blood out of his fingernails. Wolf the councilman claps his hands. Finally, you're here. I have good news. We got hold of one of Hoggart's former men. My good friend here had a nice little talk with the man and, I, and now I know where Hoggart's licking his wounds. 
The healer clears his throat, splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He speaks as though he's identifying a disease he is about to excise. The brigand known as Hoggart is hiding in a small hut on the plains to the southwest of here. Based upon my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hoggart knows the rising rage is on his heels and will have gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, Wolf the Councilman Lee waves you off. Good luck, Sellsword. We'll return with his head. Uh, leave this. We want... Oh, it's right there. Perfect. We're crossing the shingle humps. Speed this up. Okay, so we might get there in time for noon. So the time of day you attack, uh, you know, if it's nighttime, it's nighttime. If it's daytime, it's daytime. So we are going to fight a few brigand thugs and a brigand poacher. Let's us engage. All righty. So we're going to move this guy right here and move his turn to the last. This guy here. Oh, there's Hoggart. Hoggart the weasel. Move his turn to last. Uh, we're going to take a slingshot at the brigand thug. Um, not a very good chance to hit, but we'll take it. And look at that, we hit. Amazing. We'll take another shot. Ah, so close. Now we have our crossbowman, Engelbert. Another hit. Oh, this is starting off very well. Okay. Augert moves in. Oh, we got the bow. Okay, he missed. We do need to move in. Uh, for AP, we could move all the way up to there, but that would be a very bad move. So we're going to move here and put up our shield. Okay, so we have a net. We're going to throw it at him and move in to there. We're going to come in on this guy and try to get a stun with a 39% chance. Hit him, but we hit the shield. So honestly, this guy is going to go up and around, try to get to that archer. We move in, and unfortunately, he doesn't have enough uh, action points to swing. Maybe I should have waited one more round for the... Oh no! 14% chance, we can thug. Uh, we take the shot at Hoggart with 14% chance, hit the shield, one more try, we miss. I move up here. How much AP? Three. Move here. Still. Okay. Perfect. Great shot, Engelbert. Great shot. Okay, he's charging in. Going to hit the... Uh, Going to hit that poacher right there. So Radolf is here attacking Hoggart with a 35% chance. We hit one more time. Hit the shield. Knock back. Huh. 
Okay, we're going to knock him back because he has his shield up. So we're going to try and knock down the shield, and we did. Cool. Do we? I think we do. We move in right there. Move in up here. See if we can't get in a good hit. Hit the shield. Okay. So we have Lash and Flail. Flail has a 56% chance. Lash has a 41% chance. We will... 56%. 56%. Two hits. Um, unfortunately... We'll see if we can't get this stun with a 40% chance. We got it, baby! And we'll do a normal attack. Normal attack. Normal attack. And we shall... Try to kill this brigand poacher. Ooh, good hit, good hit. Sling, uh... Honestly, this guy is pretty worthless right now because everyone's engaged in melee. Oh my gosh, Sigbolt took a nasty hit there. Let's see if we can't get rid of this brigand thug. No, uh, we didn't free him up. Oh, shoot. Okay, okay. Kill. Kill. Okay. Do we take the chance? I don't think we do. And we can't get a clear shot at him. Uh, I think we just take the shot at Hog. Good hit. Good hit. Reload. How much does this cost? 4 AP? If we move there, we have... Okay, we'll move here. And... Hit him. Oh my gosh, you almost hit Sigbolt. Okay. Kill Hoggart. Kill him. Please. Please. Four misses. I have a 78% chance to hit on this one, though. And we hit the shield, of course. Okay, you need to hit the Sigbold or you die. Uh, you die. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, perfect. miss okay the more people we get in around him the better uh, because he'll lose he'll gain the debuff of surrounded which increases our chance to hit 78% baby let's go you missed you're going to die oh my god Two misses. Okay. Well, no one died. Amazing. That's pretty good. Uh, you don't often see that. So we're going to loot. They have some amber shards. That's pretty good. Some straight up gold. Not a lot of supplies, but hey. A blotched gambeson. That's pretty nice. Quiver of arrows. Falcon. Hey. Falchion. That's a, a pretty nice weapon. A wooden stick and some shields and a bow. Alright, we'll take it all. And now we leave. Hoggart lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. You put a boat... Uh, you put a boat... You put a boot on his corpse and look to your men. We're the company. For all the men who've fallen. Engelbert spits on the dead man's face. 
Let's take this bastard's head and get back to Seftenburg. Time to get paid. Perfect. We'll end in Seftenburg. Engelbert joins your side. Got a moment, Captain? You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle has left some gear worse for wear and some men got a good nickin' too. We can patch up both man and equipment while marching, but it's a lot faster to set down and do it. Of course, if we make camp, we should be wary of ambushes. The campfire in these parts can be seen from every which way. I'll keep it in mind. We're just going to make our way back to Seftenburg without camping. But usually camping's a very smart decision after a big battle like that, especially when Sigbolt got so hurt. The Return to Seftenburg The company returns to Seftenburg as victors. Their heads held high. Their heads held much higher this time. The rising raids are not the size that they once were, but they're still a force to be reckoned with as Hoggart learned in his final moments. You carry his head in a sack that you empty in front of Wolf the Councilman's feet. He jumps back, but the healer quickly picks the head up, stares at it, and nods. Wolf the Councilman approaches the brigand's bloodied face and eyes it carefully. Yes. Yes. That's his ugly mug, all right. Servants, pay this man his money. Point in hand, you raise your voice to the men. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield... There shall stand our company. All through the realm, people will know the rising rage. The men cheer. Gunnar puts his hands on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. We gain 400 crowns. And there we go. Perfect. And now, let us pause it. And yeah. This is Battle Brothers. I hope to uh, play a little bit more for y'all. Uh, we'll see how long we can last. Um, this first battle didn't really show it, but this game is... Uh, people die real quick. You know, we almost lost Sigbold. He got very lucky on five or six dodges there at the end. Uh, but you know what? People can get one shot really quickly. People die all the time. So I'm really looking forward to having this like kind of tense uh, battle situation going on with all of you. So yeah, thanks for watching. This is Latka. If you liked what you watched, if you liked what you heard, leave me a like, leave a comment. Uh, maybe, heck, maybe even hit that subscribe button. That'd be really cool. And if you want to talk in depth with me, hey, hit me up on my Discord. There's a link to the Discord in the description of the video. But hey, this is Latka. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.